The man was happy to have his cat back, he looked so content with her sat on his lap. I told him about the thing I saw, but he just laughed and said, those bastard robots, they're always getting up through the pipes. Don't worry though, it'll never get through the big doors. If I had my way, we'd have blown up the lot of them when we had the chance. I wasn't sure what he meant, but I decided now wouldn't be the best time to tell him I was a robot. The man laughed, and said, don't worry, I know who you are, and told me that he knew the old man. Okay, so I guess it hasn't been too long since we were deactivated. As we chatted, the man brewed himself some tea. He said that he had worked for the old man, in fact he had lost his sight in one of the old man's factories. Strangely, he smiled at this thought. The old man had factories. He always did me right, he said. When I had my accident, the old man said he would look after me. Is and that just did. his name, the old man? He always made sure I had enough money, and he let me move into this old pumping station on his land. Which reminds me, I have something here for you. He rummaged around behind the cupboard. Then he continued saying, The old man wanted you to have this when you were old enough, but fate wouldn't allow it. He passed me a large box. It was empty. I thought about pretending to be excited, but the man said, Wait a minute. It's empty, isn't it? He slumped back in his chair. I was robbed a few months ago. He said, almost in a whisper. It's strange. They took practically anything metal, but left loads of food and a brand new saxophone. Uh, the man okay. looked sad, so I thought I would try to change the subject. I told him about my quest to clean a million things. This at least made him smile. <laughs> he said I was welcome to go back through the pipes anytime I wanted, as there were loads of old things in there that could be cleaned away. I just need some war resistance to get it. Any of the things I missed. All junk cleared in this house. Doing all the cleans. I don't know what happened to the gravity on that one jump, but maybe eventually I can figure it out. We there we go. That helped me move fast. Tell me, is my sewer key work on this door? It it does. Where does this lead me? Um, loading? Oh, there it goes. Looks like we've got the evil bots again. Yeah, no, I'm not jumping there. You know what, I could probably attach myself- oh, I guess I just made the jump. What is that? What? I can't interact with it. Okay, maybe that's something I can interact with later once I have a new power. You gonna go through the door?
Oh. Okay, we're back at that locked door in the mansion I was wondering about. Yeah, just can't do anything about that thing. Well, I guess we'll just have to check out this direction then. I guess blue glowing objects are something I can't deal with right now. Why did it respawn me at, at that spot instead of the actual door? That was weird. Up. Oh, too fast. Junk cleared. Oh, shit. Press the wrong button for jumping. Man, I could gravitize to those dogs, huh? I well, let's head up. Boat to the mainland. Not really much else left here for me. The fisherman was right. Everything was in pieces. Everything had been destroyed. I docked the boat in some ruins. They must have once been a town. Well, that side of the dock is kind of useless. What's down here? Nothing. Just water down there. I mean, I could go in the door. I could also go up here. Like this. I don't know which way I want to be going. 20,000 junk collected. Oh, I can't climb on these, like, concrete barriers. Uh, those are robot heads. Guess I'll learn how to deal with concrete barriers later. Alright. Gravity flipping kinda hurts to look at a bit. I was confronted by a lovable fat old dog. He almost looked pleased to see me. Suddenly, three men appeared holding large guns. Or at least two men and what looked to be a pregnant woman. Incredibly, it was Mr. Silton. I thought you'd been shut down, he said. I mean, it's been years. I'm not really sure what happened, I replied. I then told him about me cleaning a million things. He laughed and said, nothing changes. He then showed me into what was surprisingly a really nice house. 
Please excuse my husband, said the pregnant lady. I'm Edwina, yes. but everyone calls me Eddie. I believe you know this idiot. And that's Preston. We've met, said the small man. It was me that delivered that thing, remember? All you used to deliver was weed, mumbled Mr. Silton as he put the dog dish on the floor. And I was there that night, when this twat was off his face on mushrooms. Thanks for letting me and the dog stay, by the way. Yeah, well, we like the dog, said Mrs. Silton. <laughs> and I suppose I've got you to thank for us meeting. What with you giving Barry those dodgy magic mushrooms? She pulled out an old photograph. It was one that Heather had taken the night I had saved Mr. Silton. Oh, Edwina was a paramedic. It reminded me of everyone else, so I asked what had happened to them. Mr. Silton said Alice had a small place in the countryside. The professor had holed up in one of the old man's factories. Mr. Deck was, believe it or not, now a presenter on the only state television channel. And Heather and her mother lived on a government compound where they both worked. I asked about the old man, surprised that Mr. Silton hadn't mentioned him. He's... he's dead, said Mr. Silton. Sorry, I thought you knew. Seriously, that really is just anyway, his name, the old Mr. man. Preston, I thought you said that robot thing found the mushrooms for you, in that order's manky old barn. Mr. Silton looked embarrassed. Well, said Mrs. Silton, I guess we've got you to thank for getting us together then. Time for bed I think, said Mr. Silton, make yourself comfy, and we'll see you in the morning. Um, okay, I have control. So we're chasing after the old man. And now... What is happening? This is definitely not a minigame where I'd want to reverse up and down. And uh, that's what they did. Why is this happening? You no, know, he's just leaving us finally. Seriously, every character is gay is named, and then there's the old man. So yeah, it, that definitely has to be his name. Home is where the heart is, Plimey the Elder. Chapter 4, Finding a Way Home. The next day, I thought it might be a good time to ask about the war. Judging by the look on everyone's faces, it wasn't. Well, the war, said Mr. Silton. Barry, interrupted his wife, can I see you for a minute? And dragged Mr. Silton out of the room, leaving me with Mr. Preston. All of Finger a sudden, gunning. Mr. Silton appeared. How about a tune-up, he said. Mrs. Silton started to make some food, and Mr. Preston was playing with the dog, leaving me to chat with Mr. Silton. I said that I really wanted to see everyone else, but Mr. Silton said that it wouldn't be that easy. Traveling now, especially for a robot, is complicated. Go back to the house, you could even do some cleaning. Wait there and I'll work out a way to get you to each of them. I told him that I couldn't get into the main house because the hallway ceiling had collapsed. 
I have just the thing, said Mr. Silton, as he pulled some sort of card out of his pocket. If you can get into the caves under the house, you can use this security pass to get into the old man's laboratories, you can get into the main house that way. I was so excited, I would be able to get back into my old room, I said thanks, and made my way to the front door. Also, I think you might be able to help us out, said Mr. Silton, but we'll meet up back at the old man's house in a couple of days, you head there and we'll see you soon. Okay. There we go, we found Mr. Silton. But there's more junk to clean up around here. I wasn't sure what to do with this machine. Well, the huge door was sealed shut. I wasn't sure how to get inside. Alright, guess we're done over here then. Just gotta head back. That was not the angle I expected to be jumping at. There we go, landed on that side. Fisherman's boat to the old man's estate. Can I go in the tent? Nope. Actually, you know what I should do? I should make sure shit's recording. Okay, everything looks fine. Let's go back in here. It's still easily in, in navigable going backwards. Yeah, there's oh, there's a concrete barrier over here. Okay, I guess I have to go through the sewers. Figure out how to use the ID card down there. Wait, that concrete barrier I can walk up. Why couldn't I walk up that other one then? Thank you. 
Well, back in here. Yeah, not seeing any way to use the ID card on this. Oh! Well, that happened. Okay. I mean, yes, totally did that on purpose. Completely intentional. No. It wasn't. What am I supposed to be doing down here? takes me back to uh, outside, okay. And there was like nothing over here, oh. What? Did I just not go this way and think I did? What the hell? No, I think I just... Some, I think I just somehow was blind to this door. Alright. Got more bad robots. They collide with each other. Oh no. Gravity, why? As I walked through the old church ruins, I was surprised to hear Mr. Silton calling me. He said he had forgotten to give me something, and the church's community hall would be the perfect place to try it out. As soon as we walked into Apparently, the hall, Mr. Silton said he the dog owners the fatty me. now. It was a pair of atlas gloves. They made me think of the old blind man with the cat, and his stolen atlas gloves. I wonder if Mr. Silton knew how lucky he was to still have them with a glove thief around. Mr. And Silton not that Mr. Stilton uh, on and stole. start chucking things around. But not him. He was very clear about that. Mr. Silton suggested we clean the hall. Of course I knew when he said we, he meant me. But I was happy to try out my new gloves. He said I should clear everything off of the basketball court and put the things on the floor either side. I fiddled with the settings for a bit, but when Mr. Silton saw I was having trouble, he produced a small manual. He explained that pressing down and X would pick a thing up. X would then throw the thing, and if I wanted to place it on the floor, I should again press down and X. He looked more and more confused as he read all this, but eventually he finished by saying, Well, I hope that made more sense to you than it did to me. Oh my god, is it X and A because that's what how you would control it on an Xbox controller? Um, there we go. Okay, so lighter objects get thrown significantly farther. Yeah, I got a basket! Eh, yeah, good enough. I guess I can't run while holding things with this either. Why are there faulty wires in here? I see this chair isn't too heavy. It's 
the, seriously, is this the blonde guy with the dog that I don't remember the name of? Oh, I guess I was picking up this statue. Music got kind of loud in this area. Up, oh, she just fell over. Not that was not the jump button. Well, shit. Serious. I gotta restart. There's so much to clean up. Just take the basketball. Again. National Brownies Association? What? Time, let's actually jump over the sparks. Just flopping over. Let's get the smear face statue. So let her flop over behind other stuff. There we go. Yeah, that should Let's be everything. See what else these gloves can do, said Mr. Silton as he flicked through the manual. He actually looked quite excited when he explained that holding X while walking into or under a falling thing would allow me to catch it. I must admit, I was then really happy when he suggested we make it a game and I try to catch 10 basketballs. Alright. Throwing them all into the hoop. Really? There we go. It's got a lot of basketballs in there, huh? Shit. Aw. How is this one basketball not going in? <laughs> it's just that one basketball.